A very good morning, children. So yesterday we have seen the different effects of the uh, like you no know, pollutants in the air and uh, what are the different problems which are caused to the human beings. So today we are going to come to the page number one sixty three and we are going to see the pollutants and also their sources. So what are the common pollutants in the air and also their sources? Now, all of you take the page number one sixty two R. Else, look at look on the screen so you'll get the picture of that. Okay, children. So go ahead. The first one is the suspended particulate matter, which is also called as the SPM, suspended particulate matter. So this is the source of this is automobiles, power plants, boilers, industries requiring crushing and grinding such as quarry and cement. So where the quarry and cement are made where the stones are being crushed to do uh, like no powder. So there this uh, particle particulate matter nothing but the particles of that are in, uh, getting into the air and polluting the air. So this is also done in the automobiles, power plants, even boilers also and even uh, industry industries which are requiring the crushing and grinding such as quarry and cement. Second one is chlorine. Second one is chlorine. So sea salt production. So where you go ahead with the sea salt production there, chlorine is added into the air and also dechlorination process where there is removal of chlorine. Okay, if you are removing chlorine, that will be added again back to the air. Right? And then biomass burning. So where you burn all the uh, plants or animals or something, so you keep on burning them at bio sense life living so what are the living things you burn the chlorine which is in them will get into the air and pulp and paper mills where the papers are being made right using the pulp they make the papers no so in in even in that place also what you can see is the uh, chlorine is evolved and that will be added to the air and that is causing the air pollution now coming to the fluorides so if you take the fertilizers if you take the aluminium refinings so where you go for go ahead with the refining the refining the aluminium okay there you can see the fluoride formation of the fluoride that is also uh, added to the air second next one is a lead ore refining battery manufacturing automobiles ore refining second one is battery manufacturing and also in the automobiles this lead is coming out and that is building the air oxides of nitrogen that is nitrous oxide nitrogen dioxide so here this oxides of nitrogen are released from automobiles power plants nitric acid man nitric acid manufacture also a secondary pollutant it is also acting as a secondary pollutant so already we have seen what are the primary pollutants and what are the secondary pollutants so what are the pollutants which are there they are primary but if they are reacting with each other and uh, and uh, giving out the new pollutants so like the product is, is called as the secondary pollutant. Okay, next one is the peroxyacetyl nitrate. So it's, all, it's also a secondary pollutant which is formed from uh, reaction with the other reaction of the primary pollutants. Next is formaldehyde, HCHO, formaldehyde. It is also a secondary pollutant. Ozone, that is O3, is also secondary pollutant. Okay, are the sources carbon monoxide right when you use the automobiles incomplete fuel combustion so that means fuel not completely burned and all the way from all these places carbon monoxide is released which is uh, a pollutant which is added to the air and then we have the carbon monoxide hydrogen sulfide hydrogen sulfide when you make the paper and pulp pulp uh, using the paper and all the petroleum refining in all these places no like hydrogen sulfide is released and then coming to the hydrocarbons, automobiles, petroleum refining, there you can see the hydrocarbons, right? So that is how they are also polluting the air. And then coming to the ammonia, fertilizers, when you use of ex excessive use of the fertilizers or when you uh, when the animals are being degraded, right? When they, when they keep on uh, getting spoiled, degraded, okay? Even if it is a plant or animals, whatever the ammonia or the nitrogen which is in that, that will... Uh, Added, it will get added to the air. So that is how even the air also is getting pulled. So these are all the different pollutants and the sources. So if you are, if now you know the sources, so if you are all, if, if at all 
if we are able to uh, control these sources but not using those sources then definitely we can uh, save our air without getting polluted okay children so now let us understand these are all the effects which are on the human beings and animals and the plants but whereas even the great monuments are also getting damaged okay they are being spoiled because of the pollutants which are in the air especially when you talk about the Taj Mahal Taj Mahal is one of the wonder of the world right one of the seven wonders of the world so out of this this Taj Mahal is now the color of the Taj Mahal is changing so because of the pollution which are caused uh, by because of the vehicles and because of the automobiles and all fuel the burning of the fuel okay then all because of all these things buses or the cars or whatever the things which are run on the fuel are not even allowed to run at least uh, 10 kilometers away from Taj Mahal so from 10 uh, at least uh, there should be a distance of 10 kilometers for all these buses and everything to go and uh, they are not allowed uh, to come to near the they are not allowed uh, to come near the Taj Mahal at any cost so Taj Mahal is now being uh, like no it's, it's a monument it's a wonder of our uh, uh, India, it's a, it's a great monument in India, so we should save it. So now that is being completely degraded by the pollution which is coming out from the automobiles and the factories. They have decided to move the factories away from Agra. They, they are not allowing the buses or the uh, vehicles or something to come there. So they are using only battery activated vehicles which, which doesn't leave out the smoke and all. So now we will study about the Taj Mahal, which is one of the seven wonders of the world isn't it so Taj Mahal is such a beautiful monument which is pure white in color but now if you see the color it's changing what is the reason behind the changing of the color of Taj Mahal it's only because of the air pollution the air pollution in Delhi is absolutely super high but whereas when you come to the Agra okay they what they have done is the archaeological department they stop the buses they stop the lorries they stop the vehicles around like no two uh, two and a half kilometers like no they should not they should not there should be no vehicle near the Taj Mahal they should move away from the Taj Mahal at least two and a half kilometers right so near to the Taj Mahal like no vehicle should be there which are giving out the uh, gases and every the, uh, the vehicles which uh, usually run over there should be of only battery only battery run uh, jeeps battery run cars battery run uh, vehicles will come there to pick you up and uh, take their take you to the Taj Mahal so oh, why why this has happened because of the factories which are near the Agra and also the buses and the lorries and the uh, vehicles which are in the Agra all these things now like now they are completely banned and they, there is a two and a half uh, kilometer distance where they should not enter into the area right into the uh, near the Taj Mahal okay so that is how we are trying to save our Taj Mahal So around Taj Mahal for around 2.5 km, and, two and it is called as no drive zone. People should not drive any car or buses over there. So even if they want to see Taj Mahal, they have to park their vehicles 2.5 km away from there. And there they have to use the battery operated vehicles so that they can come to Taj Mahal and get back to the Taj Mahal once again to the destination. So Taj Mahal, which is one of the seven wonders of uh, India is located in the Agra so it is absolutely made up of the white marbles the effect of the pollutant okay now it affected the Taj Mahal in such a way that the environmentalists and also the archaeologists department they said that the color of the Taj Mahal is completely changing so motor vehicles okay the industries uh, Mathura oil refinery okay and also uh, the, the, it is absolutely responsible for producing the SO2 that is uh, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, smoke, dust, uh, soot, all these and also apart from that it is also the, there, are, there are also acid rains over the, in that particular area. So and uh, that is how the marble, the white marble of Taj Mahal now the color of this it is changing because of all this pollutants. So taking this account they have completely switched from the petrol to the LPG only gas and definitely they have to use the unleaded petrol 
the Ministry of Taj Mahal, and they have shifted the complete uh, polluting uh, what do you call industries and uh, factories away from Taj Mahal. So that is what they have done to save Taj Mahal. And uh, okay, this is if if this is one example, and then there is a Bhopal tragedy that is really unforgettable human sin. So that is the one which we cannot even forget. Industries actually, you know, you look, if you look at them, the, you look at them as a symbol of development of our country. So more industries, we think that there's more development. From the other side, if you lack the safety measures, if you are, if you are not able to look at the safety of the living organisms around the factory, then it's absolutely a loss to the life. Okay, so in second on uh, second uh, December nineteen eighty four, there was an insect insecticide factory where insecticides are made, which are the like you know, the liquids which are the powder which is used to kill the insects and also insecticides factory were there. So they were uh, on their work. So suddenly there was a leakage, like you no know, the leak the one is called as the isomethyl cyanate. Isomethyl cyanate, the gas leaked from there. And you know, almost uh, three thousand human beings died. Almost three thousand human beings died, and like you no know, five thousand above are paralyzed. And the other people who like you no, know, they uh, they were paralyzed, and thousands of cattle, birds, dogs, cats died only in one night in that Bhopal. It did not take much time for them to die. Only in one night, all these things happened because of the. Methyl isocyanate. That is the Bhopal tragedy. That is what even till now we think we talk about. So. Because they did not uh, follow the preventive measures, because they did not look at the safety of the people and also the other living organisms uh, living around the factory, the isocyanate, isomethyl cyanate, was actually released from the factory or industry, and that uh, leaked into the air, and that was that was taken by the people. Three thousand people died in the in the night. Five thousand people got paralyzed. Cats, dogs, birds, which are living in that vicinity, vicinity, they all died. This is all because of methyl isocyanate. So methyl isocyanate, and that is uh, that came out from the uh, insecticide factory. So thousands of lives were you know, like helplessly crushed under the cruel foot. Of human activity, so this it's nothing but a human activity, a cruel human activity. Thousands of like lives, no like lives are crushed under them. So this is one of the industrial uh, tragedy, Bhopal tragedy. Now it it cannot be forgotten. You cannot even try to forget that particular tragic incident in our lives.
So now we will stop this here. Okay, now tomorrow we are going to see what are the effects of the air pollution. What are the effects of the air pollution? That is what we are going to see in tomorrow's class. See, until then, see you all. Have a great day. Take care and bye.